Ah, the world is a better place today. Yes, he might have signed a two-year contract a year ago, but it's always good to confirm these things, isn't it? And uh, we're confirming today that, yes, Robert Dowdy's, of course, with us for another year, never in doubt. And uh, Dowdy, welcome home. And I guess that's what it is, isn't it? it? It's home back in Sheffield. Absolutely. It's obviously nice to be confirmed, like you said, and uh, it's home. It's nice to be home for at least one more year. And obviously, hopefully, here's to many more. Yeah. Over the years, Daddy, and you've been here 100 years now, there's been some great times and there's been some not so good times. But do you get the feeling that the, 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 the corner has been turned a little bit? The, the, the oil tanker is shifted and, and those good times are, are right around the corner again now after not just the cup win last year, but the stability, perhaps a big core of the team coming back. And there's really only good times ahead. Absolutely. Like you said, we are... Uh... We're very spoiled, and I've been very spoiled in my career of winning winning a lot of trophies with with, with Sheffield. And uh, we had a couple of years there where it seemed to slip just a little bit, and it, it seemed seemed to be hard work. Where hockey is, uh, I'm I'm very lucky enough to play the game I love for a living. And when you when you're not winning, it, it hurts because uh, I, I enjoy lifting trophies and I enjoy winning hockey games and it seems a lot easier of a job when you're doing that. So last year definitely felt like a, the winds had changed a little bit and it, it was a lot more fun and it was uh, it was great to be a part of again. It was a tale of two halves, wasn't it? Because the first half you were on fire. You were hotter than a Birmingham Balti and you were 24 points, 24 games and it was, it was flowing, wasn't it? Until the injury, um, which then entailed what could have been almost a career season. Yeah, I was loving it. I was I was really enjoying my hockey and uh, enjoying every day, to be honest. Training and games, everything was flowing nice for me. And then, obviously, all of a sudden, when you hit the boards at that speed, it doesn't matter what you're made of. Uh, freak injury and put my season to an end, which was, like you said, frustrating because I was loving life at the time. But uh, all back healed now, raring to go. Just itching until somebody gives me a green light to go and skate on some ice somewhere. That would be nice. That would be nice. Talk us through post-injury because obviously everybody was depressed when, when it actually happened and you had the operation and it didn't quite go right and then you had to go back in again. Um, explain what they did, explain how it is and explain basically what your rehab has been like from then to now. So obviously first operation, AC joints got damaged. So they had to go in and screw some screw and string my shoulder back together a little bit basically and it, the actual screws and everything it was stable but it was just the wound got infected so they had to go in there and kind of clean out the infection so when it when the first one happened we were aiming to get me back for the end of the year for playoffs and everything like that but then obviously having the second operation set me back to square one with my rehab my rehab had to hold those extra three four weeks till it got ready to rehab again so that was Extremely disappointing because obviously when you've got a goal in mind and then to be told you don't have a goal anymore, you just got to wait yeah. until it heals and then you can get ready for next year was a, was a, a kick in the teeth because it, it took the wind out my sails a little bit. Yeah. But what, is it like, what is it like now? Uh, end of June, is it where you would expect it to be end of June most seasons or is it still a little bit to go? No, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm... Uh, Fully fit, lifting weights. I'd normally lift, training as much and yeah. golfing plenty. So, <laughs> has, has, it affected, has it affected the swing? No, I'm still hacking out the rough just like everyone else. Yeah, I don't think you hack out the rough, Rob. I don't think you hack out the rough. <laughs> You're a terrible watcher of the game, Rob. A disgusting oh. watcher. You're a nervous wreck. You should come with a government health warning. I... <laughs> I couldn't stand next to you in the Challenge Cup final. I had to run away several several times. And um, But what you did, you saw the club win a trophy, which was so important, wasn't it? It seemed like it had only been a couple of years, but it seemed like a lot longer. But the club needed that, didn't it? It needed that night in Cardiff. It definitely did. Like you said, it hadn't been too long. It had only been a couple of seasons. But yeah. like I said before, we've been spoiled in Sheffield. We've won a lot of trophies in a short space of time. And... It's almost like you get used to doing it. It's just a given. And then it was a slap back to reality a couple of seasons ago when it was nothing and it was fighting for position. So to win that trophy and get back to winning ways was huge for me personally. It was it was nice to have that feeling again. And as a club, I think it was massive. I thought it was a sign of things to come. 
I think we've got a strong core in here now and obviously looking to retain as much as we can. So it was awesome to be a part of and nothing but excitement for when we get back on the ice together. You mentioned that word core and it is so important, isn't it? And even though Aaron hasn't confirmed players returning, uh, in, in great numbers, you would imagine that a good chunk of last year's team will will return this year. And that will be important, not to start off at training camp almost trying to learn everybody's name again. Having a, a good group of top-end players return has to be a, a help going forward. Absolutely, and I think I've, I've touched on it already, but that's why we had that success in bunches for, for such a while because we managed to retain a core for so long. And then it got to the point where everyone was starting to age a little bit and a few few names dropped off and went into retirement and stuff like that. So well, it was like trying to rebuild a core again and we were shaking the dice and the rolling them out there for a couple of seasons to try and build a core and nothing was quite sticking. And then you could tell from day one this year it was different. You could tell the first couple of days of training camp, I, I sat down with John and, and a few of the boys and I was saying, like, this is this is a seriously good team. It didn't take a genius to figure out. It was a completely different feeling on the ice. Everything was a little bit smooth. Everything was a little bit crisper than years before. And it was a nice feeling from day one. You could feel something good was happening. And what role did Aaron Fox play in all of that? And, and how has his relationship with you been over the last 12 months? Oh, it's been fantastic. From day one, I had a great relationship. And... It's nice, obviously, it, he, he cares so much about who he brings in and not just as a player, but as a person. And I think that's massive as a team that you, you bring good people into the organisation and he's brought good people and it showed on the ice. Yeah. I forget now how many years it is you've, you've been with us. You had your two-year sabbatical, didn't you, in Sweden and Belfast. But um, you, you mentioned at the top of this interview, Sheffield is home. And I know speaking to you through the summer, being a Steeler is massively important to you, and we all love your your boy Oscar. And uh, one day you want him to sit in the you know the seats, and maybe even see the seventy five up in the stands, or or look at all those trophies. And, and legacy is something, even though you're a young man, that you already started thinking of that you want legacy in Sheffield. Absolutely, it's uh, I moved here as a, as a young lad. I left school, went and played in the states for a year. And then moved straight to Sheffield, and I've been there since. Even even when I went away and played in Sweden and everything, in the summer I didn't come back north. I, I lived in Sheffield. My wife's from Sheffield. My children are Sheffield kids, so it's Sheffield's home. And I want to obviously leave a mark here. It's uh, yeah. it'd be nice, obviously, to leave a permanent mark. Yeah. I'm sure you would have watched bits of it if you didn't have to sit through the whole two hour, two and a half hours of it. But but Jason and Mark and Jono and I spoke about that 10 years they all had. And if you like, OK, Jono's having another 10 with yourself, with Davey, with Benny, with, with all, the, all the other guys. And, and you feel that that core of British lads inside that room as well is a key ingredient to what we have in Sheffield, obviously led by the captain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said, that's why it was so successful. I came in, how many years did I come in? A couple of years, I think it was, after John and Hugh had got here and it was a massive part of me. I don't know, you're going to have to look at the stats. I remember my first game was 2008, maybe, yeah. for the Steelers. And for me, coming in as a young pup, it was quite daunting coming into Sheffield because as a kid growing up, the Sheffield Steelers were so huge. So me walking into a dressing room with a... Well, without being rude, a bunch of Canadians that I didn't know anybody's name or anything like that. It was terrifying. And right from day one, they took me under their wing and I was made part of, part of the core and part of their own and never looked back. So it's having roles like that where players, you come in, young British guys nervous or Canadian guys who don't, Canadian or import guys that don't know what it's all about to be a stealer, they soon get taught by that core. Yeah. Seven, eight, you played your first game. You played seven games. You had an assist. It was the year after you came in as a rookie and you were the first, I think, British player to score 20 goals. You had 23 in that eight, nine season. And uh, oh, that was when I'm it kind of... Balls. I'm not got balls. I'm sure I had 30. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that no, was I, can't, I can't scroll across on my phone, yeah. 30. <laughs> but, you were, but you were the first Brit to score. I remember you were the first Brit to score uh, 20 plus in, in your opening year. When you see the young Brits coming in now, you know, Kirky, Cole, you know, Brownie, uh, uh, young Alec Graham at the moment, Graham, 
do you, do you do you see yourself in them when when they were just when they come in? Do you remember those days? And and now you're the older guy. You're the older guy passing on. All right, the David. All right, David. Less of that old. Oh, ah, you're old, mate. You're old. <laughs> you're old kid. Yeah. No, I I do I do. I remember coming in and you can see the first few days. Everyone they're so nervous to make a play and stuff on practice. They're just trying to do everything simple. And I like to try and get in the ears a little bit and say like. Play your game. Yeah. Play your game. I was I was a nightmare. I remember I used to do silly stuff all the time, try and stick handle it out of my own zone in front of my own goal. And I had people like Jordy Lehman. He never he never used to shout me. Jordy was the loudest guy on the ice. But if I'd do something stupid, he wouldn't even shout me, He'd just give me this look and I knew like, Oh, oh no, whoops. Sorry, Jordy. Yeah. I just sorry Jordy. I I'd, I'd I'd try and stick handle through the crease or something daft. I'd get it stripped off me. He'd have to pull me out. He'd have to make a stupid save. And then he'd just look at me and I'd be like, sorry, won't do it again. And that was kind of my my teaching, if you will, of what right and wrong. It was just a look I used to get. We all had that look off Jody, didn't we? <laughs> he had that ability that you actually wanted to please him, didn't you? You're like, absolutely. You wanted- Wanted him to be grateful. You wanted you wanted to do right by Jody. He was one of those characters. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. John, John, oh, he's he's playing. I think his seventy third season with us this this coming <laughs> uh, this coming year. And it, it seems that he's been on these little videos. Not only that we've done that, Ice Hockey UK have done that. That Free Sports have done. We've seen more of Jono's house um, doing these videos than uh, we never get invited around there. But. He's a, he's a special captain, but a special bloke, and he's a special mate as well, isn't he? He's, he's such an important cog in our steel as well. Absolutely. It's uh, the amount of respect that I've got for Jono, and it, to be honest, everybody in the team does. is phenomenal. He's, he's a great person and a great leader, and jo- Jono doesn't speak that often in the room. He's not a guy that comes in and screams and shouts, but when he talks, people listen. He doesn't need to scream and shout. He can, he can talk in a muted tone, and people are quiet and they listen. And he's a, he's a great captain and a great servant of the club. It's awkward at the moment, isn't it? Because we don't know when we're going to start. We all want to start tomorrow. Um, and we're all waiting for Boris to give us the uh, the green light. What communication do you have with the boys at the moment? Like, I know you have your WhatsApp groups. I know you, you're training with, with, with Danny. But is there much talk? Is there much communication between the guys? Yeah, we. to be honest, most of us, we talk to each other every day, every day or every other day. We got, like I said, we've got a we're tight core of British guys, and then obviously with some of the, the the core imports as well, we have WhatsApp groups and we all keep in touch. But the British boys, we touch base quite a lot. We we speak often, just about anything, just to take the mick out of each other or just checking in on each other. And obviously, we meet we meet to work out with uh, yeah. with Danny still, so we we still all speak very very often. You say it's been awkward because you just want to get your skates on and you just want to oh. skate right now. Have you been able to get into any kind of gym or is it just what you've got at home you're working with? I converted my garage into a bit of a gym. And my garage was like any, everybody else's garage. It was just filled with empty boxes and rubbish and all sorts. And uh, I, I ordered a skip and uh, cleared it all out and got a bike in there, got some weights in there, got a bench in there so I could work out every morning and but it's it's not the same as being around the boys it's not it's not that same feeling you do it because you have to do it at the minute and I, I have to be strong and ready to go but it's still not that feeling I, I, I love going to the rink and I love going to the gym with the boys and I'm, uh, I'm missing it at the minute mentally is it the, ban- is it the banter you miss is it the uh is it the pulling of the leg is it, is it the, the seeing the boys some of these boys like i said like with john i've played with john and now for for how long have i worked out with john 12 13 years mm. every summer all season mm. so it's it, it, it the, the best friends now they're not teammates yeah. some of the, my best friends so it, it's hard obviously not seeing them every day and working out every day together have you been watching some of the highlights that we've been putting out? These great goals, these great moments, the the five period game against Cardiff that, of course, you and Levi were involved in the great celebration. How many times have we shown that uh, that goal recently? But uh, it brings back good memories, doesn't it? Awesome memories. I always remember that night after the the playoff win against Cardiff, the five periods. 
it's one of those whenever you win a trophy, you party all night and don't get into late hours of the morning and you're silly drunk. And that one, everyone was so exhausted. It's like, yeah, we're going to party all night. And I, I remember we must have been, the first bar we got to, we had about two beers and guys were falling asleep on the beers. Like, <laughs> the guys were that tired. It was the longest, most draining emotionally as well as physically game I think I've ever been a part of. So, but amazing, amazing memories. And it's nice watching them back. Yeah, it is indeed. Hey, David, there's going to be plenty more of those memories, I'm sure, this coming year and for you for many, many more years uh, to come. Glad to have you all confirmed, all buttoned down. Thanks again for coming and joining us. Say hello to Oscar. We all love Oscar. It's amazing how popular that boy is, isn't it? <laughs> Emma, Emma <laughs> jokes, uh, Emma jokes now. We get to more places than some of the players. It was, <laughs> I think, because of all the security guards and everything at the arena now, all know him. So there'll be a queue of people waiting to get into the lounge afterwards and he just kind of strolls past everybody. The guy will move the rope for him so he doesn't have to queue up. He just wanders where he likes. Key to the city. <laughs> but that's good. Those are memories that, I mean, for a boy, that must be fantastic for his dad to play for the Steelers and he comes into the room and everybody knows him and he's, he's like the king of the arena, isn't he? He lives for it. He absolutely lives for it. I know there was... He's had some away games because obviously he's started now and he's had some away games and missed a few games the last season. It broke his heart. He was in tears and he was all excited to play his game. And then as soon as he'd get off, it, it, Em would call me and say, it's kind of hitting. We're not going to make it back in time for the game. And he's just bawling his eyes out, bless him, because he, he loves it. Every week, that's all he looks forward to all week in school. How, how many more days till ice hockey, daddy? How many more days till the Steelers? And it's like, right, we've got three more days and it's Steelers time. I guess. He loves it. it well, well, I'm so privileged to be able to bring my kids up in the environment I do and have the club that I have. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's good. We, we love having everybody around as well. Rob, enjoy the rest of the summer. Let's hope it ends sooner than later uh, this summer and we're all back at the arena again soon. And uh, thanks for joining us and say hi to the family. Thanks, Matt. See you soon.